you know, David was a great father, a man after God's own heart. And then, mm. and then he's like, David's like, look, Solomon, I don't want you to lead the way I did. And mm. God blesses Solomon because of David, because of his faithfulness. And mm. then comes to him in a dream and gives him, gives him the wisdom in a dream to build the house of God, to do something mm. that's David's heart. And, um, you know, that blows me away, you know, that, mm. that, and the first thing that he got Lana was, was the dream for this wisdom was two women that came to him. You know, the story. Yeah. And, they, and one of them, you know, they both have children. One of them has slept on one and he, and this died and he has to make judgment between, okay, who's the mom. And he has this yeah. supernatural wisdom, which yeah. is judgment, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and an ability, I believe a pure heart to steward that, that wisdom and that judgment to say, you know, okay, just cut the baby in half. And obviously he wasn't going to yeah. do it, but the right yeah. mom cried out. Yeah, that's yeah. And that's amazing. And I think as well, like there's been like the Lord is speaking so clearly right about um, wisdom. And this is the hour where we are going to walk in his wisdom and know his ways in a way that we haven't. And, you know, accessing the the wisdom of God to build in this era and the mm -hmm. strategies of God. Um, but it begins, I believe, with the fear of the Lord. We know that scripture, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it's so it's from that place where I'm living in reverential awe of who he is. I'm living in that place. Then I walk in wisdom. Then I walk in the wisdom of God. And I think, you know, so much lately I've been pondering, Lord, you know, isn't it interesting that you have been speaking about the restoration of the fear of the Lord to the church, the awe and wonder, you're cleansing and you're speaking of the wisdom, the increase of wisdom that is going to come upon the, the body of Christ and upon the church. And so you can clearly see God is setting the stage for us to walk in um in, in our authority and in the place of, you know, governing from our seat and that place of, of being the, the light of the world and rising up in this Isaiah 60 hour. And so I think, you know, even thinking about wis the wisdom of God, I've been thinking lately, like that's no light thing. You know, it's not, that's no light thing. And, and that to actually be invited into that place to be able to carry his wisdom immediately in my heart, I begin to cry out, God, purify me, do whatever you have to do in my life so I can carry your wisdom because it's precious. And I, I feel like this purity message is in so many different areas, but especially even in the area of almost like an awakening to the, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like the absolute privilege that it is to carry the wisdom of God. Like, do we actually realize, you know, that it, it's the king of kings, right? It's not, and I know guys, you hear me say this all the time and I'm going to keep saying it, but it's not our next door neighbor that's giving us good advice, right? It's the one who created the heavens and the earth, right? The one who, um, you know, sent his one and only son, like the king of kings has invited you into that place of intimacy with him and then from that place you can govern and um you know from your seat and see your your marriage your family your nation everything impacted for the kingdom of god and so i think it for me it boils down to this place of the restoration of the fear of the Lord in the church and the awe and wonder of God. And if I am living in that place of awe and wonder of who he is, then I am going to walk in a way that is wanting to honor him with everything that I have because I see who he is. And I think that that's a really important thing to remember right now, especially in this purifying fire and the things that are going to come, because there's going to be more things that the Lord is going to purge out of the church. We're going to see some unexpected things take place where God's going to align and realign. And it's all for um, to bring us into the alignment to carry what he's releasing. So I just, yeah, I think that was amazing. So, so good. Um, one other thing I just want to say, and then I'll hand to you, Tom, if you've got anything else. Um, while you were talking, Tom, I, I saw this word comparison. And I want to say this, that I really believe right now that there could be some of you watching that you're in a really intense fire. And, uh, and in the fire, I saw that the Lord was dealing with comparison. There's been an insecurity uh, in your heart regarding the message that you carry, uh, the giftings that you have. And so you've been looking around at other people and there's been this this. Um, entrapment of comparison and you've been feeling uh, caught under the weight of um, 
can I say it, it like doubt? It's a doubt of your anointing, your calling, because it looks very different. And there's some of you watching right now that actually you're even getting um, dreams and revelation from the Lord about what is to come in this new era, but it's actually a different message to what some people around you are carrying. And so you've been actually saying to the Lord, God, I feel like I'm carrying the wrong message. There's something wrong with me. The majority are carrying a different message. And I felt like like if that's you, I want to say to you right now that I saw not only the Lord delivering you from comparison, but he's fortifying within you a message that is from him because you're actually called to be, you're, you're forerunning. You're actually forerunning uh, what the Lord is, is going to do in this new era. And so I just want to remove off you right now in the name of Jesus, that condemnation and just break that attack of the enemy that's coming against you to say you're hearing wrong and your anointing isn't powerful and you need to look a certain way. You need to operate a certain way. You need to move in your anointing and, and your gifting in, in the same way as other people. I just want to speak to you right now and just say that this is the hour where God is raising you up in the fire with a confidence, not, a, not an arrogance, like a confidence in purity of what you carry before him that is empowering you to be able to stay in your lane and to run in the way that God has called you to run and not bow to the fear of man. I just see this deliverance of the fear of man and that actually as you continue to embrace this fire and run with the Lord, um, I see a favor of God. Expect the favor of God to come upon your obedience um, in this moment. But I just, I feel for you because I felt while Tom was talking, all of a sudden I felt this wrestle in my heart and I felt this pain. And so I want to release hope to you that this is actually a moment where God is birthing you and positioning you and, and going to raise you up in purity, what it looks like to run in what he has called you to do and not bow to other people or even apologize for it. Thank come on. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. And I declare, I declare that over you as well. And I, I, I want to say that, that the pursuit of purity is that you realize you were meant to stand out, not to fit in. So good. And, you know, we were not meant to conform or, or, or become, you know, someone looking like someone or, or, or trying to be like someone we're not that, you know, that, that really what it does is it, 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 when we begin to compare ourselves, it brings us into complacency and lethargy yeah. and, and it takes us off that highway. And, and I meet people all the time that, that, you know, that I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this spirit on their life and by what God is doing and the authenticity. And then, yeah. you know, when you bring people together, there's just that natural thing that says, you know, we compare and, you know, we really have to fight that. Um, and, and learn to stay in our, in our lane and learn to stay in our process and learn how to love people, <laughs> love our enemies, bless those, you know, because look, if you're going to be, um, if you're going to walk in purity, I just want to say these things. And I want to share something on emotional intelligence that I yeah. believe is key for the season is if you're going to walk in purity, know this, it's going to be judged. It's going to be misjudged. Um, it's going to be misunderstood. It's going to be uh, mocked. And this is where the blessing is, guys. This is like when you truly are walking in authenticity, basically what you're saying is I'm getting off the road of like the wide road. Everybody's taking that road. Look, I'm going to go a different way. I, mm. I just believe God is giving many of us an exodus to get off the road everybody else is taking yep. and, and, and pave your own road. Like I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not enforcing or, or encouraging independence. I'm encouraging authenticity that, that the spirit of God would come and allow you to become, because once he writes your narrative, once he writes your story, like you, you're going to realize that you're going to be a, a voice of freedom to set others free in Christ. And, um, and that's, that's, you know, purity is also, it's not in the eyes of, it's not in the eyes of men, it's in the eyes of God. Yeah. And so we got it. God is shifting all our perspective. You know, like Peter said, you know, Lord, you're not, no, you can't go to the cross. And he says, you know, get behind me. You're not mindful of the things of God. You're mindful of the things of man. Mm -hmm. And so purity looks like having our eyes always on God. Like we talked about with Matthew 5, 8, it's like seeing God on everything. Like Lana, you had mentioned, yeah. you know, everyone's, everyone's, we're going to have a desire. We're always going to want to take a shortcut. <laughs> and, and the reality is we've got to fight the shortcut because, 
If you have a, you know, specifically a prophetic calling on your life, you know, look at Joseph. It's a great example. God mm -hmm. is going to put you in a pit. And guess yeah. what? You can't get yourself out of it. Yeah. God's going to put you in a prison. You can't get yourself out of it. God's yeah. going to put you in Potiphar's house. You, you, you got to pass the test. And, you know, That's Potiphar's, right. you know, he, Joseph passed the test in Potiphar's house when his wife tried to seduce him and try to pervert him. And so, you know, purity is so important. And ultimately, um, it, 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 it stands out. It's, it's, uh, people are drawn to it. Because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's something, even unbelievers are drawn to purity and purity only comes from God. That's yeah. it. Nowhere else. You've got to stay true to who you are. Like so if I can encourage you, if Lon and I can encourage many of you, listen, stay true to who you are and stay true to where you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to where you are because, you know, and all, and at the same time, look like, this is what, this is what like maturity looks like. I don't know what I'm doing, but what do you mean? You don't know what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. look, I'm just telling you, I don't know what I'm doing. Like God brought me to a place and he's brings all of us to a place. Lana would agree with me yes. that the more we know, the less we know. Yeah. And people are like, they're, you know, they're enamored because of an anointing. Look, the closer we get to God, the more we realize, wow, we, we really need God yeah. because yeah. that's my wife. I mean, I'm constantly getting Lana. I'm constantly getting in other people's cars. Like, I go to the gym. I drive a black Honda Accord. I come out of the gym and I get, I'm lost. Okay. I'm lost in God. And I'm pulling the, I'm pulling the, the, and I'm like, why is my door not opening? And in some cases I've actually gotten in other people's cars. Oh, no. Okay. I mean, this is my life. Okay. I mean, I'm tuned into heaven and yeah. sometimes that can be, be interesting, but, but I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just doing yeah. my best to follow the Lord and uh, it looks different for all of us, but don't try to be somewhere, don't try and be somewhere you're not. What do I mean by that? Don't mm -hmm. try to be over spiritual. Yeah. Like, be okay with where you are. Like, you're like really embrace. Like, don't try and preach a message you haven't walked out. Mm -hmm. Really stay true to look. This is what I'm walking in. This is what this is the revelation I have. One of the things I've noticed about purity is look, I, I there's all these different voices, all these different magnets trying to pull, like pull mm -hmm. here and pull there. I'm like, look. I'm going to stay true to the voice of God and like yeah. to the best of my ability. Have I missed it? Yes. But I want to walk through the God doors. I don't want to walk through the good doors. So I want to be at the right place at the right time with the right message, with the right heart. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I just believe that this all comes from that seed of posture of sitting down in the gate, a gate of purity and, and staying true. And listen, be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage many of you, many of the viewers you're that are watching you Lana, look like, be true. One, Lana is one of the most sincere and honest people I know. Let me just say that she, she, she's authentic. She's real. Her, her family's real. And like, I'm drawn to that. Like we're, and I know you're drawn to that. We're drawn to that because what that says is that there is authenticity in what God is doing in our life. And we don't have to sell it. Look, mm -hmm. we're going to, we're going to buy it and we're, you know, we're not going to sell it. Okay. Buy gold refined in the fire. And I pray that mm -hmm. over you. Like yeah. tonight, Revelation three, that you would buy that goal. Listen, it's got to be cleansed. It's got to be gone. It's got to go in the fire. But look, mm -hmm. if I can encourage you, get in the fire. Don't feel like you have to have all the answers because, you know, if I can just I'll be honest, like if I'm, I'm learning to say, look, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And if I do know, that's great. Praise God. If I don't know, then you know what? Guess what? We'll go on a journey together. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. And I want to be as true and authentic, authentic as I can. And lastly, let me say this. I believe that, that, that God is, is doing, he's doing a lot of different things. But one of the things I did, a, I, uh, one of the stories of my life is God began to say, look, I'm going to pour out my spirit and, and um, I'm going to teach you how to facilitate that. And I'm like, God, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and but really what it's meant for me personally was I'm going to purify your heart and I'm, and I'm going to cleanse your heart and I'm going to teach you how to facilitate the hearts of, of my people and how to mm -hmm. direct and navigate them. But the, the pouring out of God's spirit has to do Joel two, acts two, dreams, visions, and prophecy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are all directive. They're, they're not just revelation just to be poured out They're Like God's pouring them out right now in the three measures of dreams, visions, and prophecy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and God began to give me a revelation. Okay. I'm going to teach you as you go. Many of, mm -hmm. many of you tonight are probably like, look, I need, I, I can't go until I'm taught. No, no. Here's what happens. Hands-on training come and God says, go. And he says, I'll teach you along the way. Yeah. 
Psalm, Psalm, Exodus 4 talks about, there's this word when God told Moses, no, you go and I'll teach you as you go. That word is Yarak, which means to facilitate the flow. It means to direct the traffic, direct the spirit. So as we posture our hearts in purity, Lana, Mm. as we say yes to the fire, what's happening is God's giving us turn by turn navigation to direct the spirit. And he's rewarding us with his communication, which is dreams, visions, and prophecy. And then he began to speak to me about the new man. I'm going to read this passage to you out of Exodus or it's Ephesians chapter four. And it's verse 17 through 24. Let me read this because this has to do with what I believe, you know, God is purifying many of your hearts. And I believe it's coming through emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now, I would love to love to read this definition to you. Like what what is emotional intelligence? Because um, I, I believe it's it's something that is is so key for the hour that we're in Lana and it here's, here's the definition and you're going to have to go back and listen to this. Okay. But it, it, it means the capacity to be aware of or control and express one's emotions and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously wow. and empathetically. Now, very important judiciously, meaning like you judge the matter. Well, mm. empathetically means Jesus empathized with, with everyone. So those are two realities that the judge and the compassion, wow. right? This is all seated in the realm of emotions that has to do with intelligence. Now, um, now I believe in the central intelligence agency of heaven. And I mm-hmm. believe heaven is going after many of you tonight. I believe you're going to have dreams tonight and this week where the spirit of God is going to reveal your heart to you. He's going to show you things he's purifying that he's mm-hmm. because in the purifying, he's going to take you further in himself. He's going to reveal who he is. And you're going to be able to see him clearly in areas that you've been kind of foggy. Okay. God's bringing your emotions into greater fullness, greater perfecting of the fire. And what you said, you said it twice, Lana. I've been hearing the same word fortification. Mm -hmm. God is fortifying us. He's fortifying Mm -hmm. us for what's coming because there's some battles coming, but God is going to raise us up to be a stronghold. So men can run to it to the day in the day of trouble. But let me read this Ephesians four here, uh, 17 through 24. It says, This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility, the futility of their mind. That word futility means the devoid of truth or perverted. Okay, Um, having their understanding. Imagine that means imagination darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Um, Who being past feeling. Now, if if you were in a room with me, I would say, hey, say this with me, past feeling, (laughs) being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Now, notice when we talked about Matthew 5, 8 earlier, we talked about how, you know, it was about being blameless, being clean. This is this is actually the spirit of God saying, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to train you how how to have how to how to step into purity because God's pulling us into purity. He's pulling you in. Okay, so tomorrow when something happens, you're like, well, you didn't cause this. No, God's pulling you into it. And he's mm-hmm. training you. And I was actually teaching on this the other day. Um, I was doing a podcast and a lot of my phone started to ring. Yeah. I looked at the caller ID and it was building 421. Well, my message that I was preaching on, that I was teaching on was Ephesians 421. If you, <laughs> indeed, you have insist the signs of heaven were booming. And it's like, listen, his, he's on this. His, there's oil wow. on it, which means wow. there's fire and purity on it. And, and I believe God in this past feeling, this in this verse 19 past feeling wow. really means to be um, to be grieved out or to cease to feel pain. Mm. Now, I want to speak to your hearts tonight. Some of you have been in so much pain because of the transition, but I want to speak to the purpose in your pain. I want to speak to the blessing that's in your pain. I want to speak to 
You know, no, the devil's the devil's trying to throw condemnation in your process. No, God wants to say, hey, just let the pain come forth because God is going to raise up an emotional intelligence in your life where you can really feel again. Many, mm-hmm. A lot of many people, because of the fire, because of things God's trying to get out of us, they 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 can't feel, they can't yeah. they can't see, they can't hear, they can't taste, they can't touch, they can't. You know, there, our mm-hmm. senses are being fully activated, and I want to say through the mm-hmm. seed of purity. God is activating all of your senses to come out of apathy, to come Mm -hmm. out of lethargy. And the spirit of God is coming to teach and train you and facilitate you in to the greatest move that we've yet to walk in, in the new era. And and Mm -hmm. it's coming through the fire. It's coming through purity. It's coming through. God is saying, listen, these are those that have washed their, their robes been washed, washed by the blood of the lamb. And I just want to encourage many of you that God is going after your, in your dreams. He's going to, he's going to highlight the, the emotions where the where some of you maybe had emotions stunted, you were hurt or you were wounded, and God mm-hmm. is coming to bring supernatural healing in your dreams to actually show you, look, I'm going to purify you. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to wash you. My word is even, even now I believe there's going to be impartation and encounters that are going to come to you in the night season where the Spirit of the Lord would come and counsel you and bring you into purity, bring you into washing, and make you as white as white as snow. Tom, that is amazing. I feel the weight of God so heavily upon that. I think that, you know, I think we should land there. But would you mind praying for everyone? Um, I just, when you were sharing that, I just, I felt so many people are in that place right now where they're like, oh, that's exactly how I feel. My heart is just, I can't feel. I'm clouded. All of the things that you were sharing. So I think, yeah, would you mind praying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Father, In the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you that you are the God of every season, Lord, that 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 we are transitioning and many that are on this call tonight that you are in a season. God says, I purpose this season. I fashion this season not to necessarily take you into a new revelation, but to actually bring you into the revelation that I've been working in you and and making space, making room. The Lord says in my father's house, there are many mansions. And I'm bringing you into the greater reality of more rooms in your heart. And God says, I'm cleaning areas in your heart. I'm, I'm taking the, the launderer's soap. I'm taking the fire into those places. And, and, and I just pray tonight, Lord, that you would strengthen, that there would be a wind of refreshing that would come of hope, of joy, of just really true, like r- the rain of heaven would come and just wash over and just all the uncleanness, Lord, all the guilt, all the condemnation all the shame, Lord, all the, just the, the lies of the devil of the warfare that's tried to keep you from crossing over from that place to this place. I just speak right now that the spirit of God would come and lay you down, that would come and lay you down in a divine place for a divine moment. Like Jacob laid his head down on the rock. And he said, this is none other than the house of God and the gateway of heaven. And I just declare, God's going to do it supernaturally. Like God's going to bring the striving to ceasing. He's going to bring you into rest, divine rest, divine alignment. And I just see, I see the physician's hand coming in with a scalpel and I see him performing surgery on many of you. But I I just want to tell you that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. And I just, I just want to just encourage many of you just begin to call upon the Holy Spirit. Like I, I see the Lord going after the lifeboats. When I say lifeboats, these are lifeboats that are unto preservation. God is saying, look, he, he, is, he is intentional about the boat that you're on. He's wanting to cut all the preservations that's trying to get away and get here or get there. But I just, I just want to encourage you tonight that the Spirit of God would anchor you, that he would guide you through the storm, that he would see you through to the other side, that he would bring the resources that you need. But, but you could be very honest and transparent with the pain in your heart, like, like even the prayer of Jabez, he said, you know, he cried out to the Lord because of his pain. He said, I don't want to cause people the same pain, but God blessed him and God, God stretched out his borders and he healed him. And I just declare right now, God's going to heal you of the sorrows of the pain. And, and, you know, he's going to throw all that, all those things into the sea of forgetfulness mm-hmm. and just, you're going to transition. And I also pray that you would be able to go past the offenses, go past the the misunderstandings go past the uh, the the things that 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 could that could have been a rock of offense to you, but you're just that's not going to distract you. You're going to hit the mark, and um, and just keep your eyes on Jesus. And I just Lord, I thank you, Lana, and I just we want to bless you. 
And we want to say, just run the race set before you. Lay hold. I remember this passage got me through, Lana. It mm-hmm. says, Paul says, I lay hold of that which I've been laid hold of for. And I want to mm-hmm. declare tonight, I pray that you would know what you are being laid hold of for so that you could partner and say, God, I'm not going to let go. I want to encourage many of you that are thinking about quitting. Yeah. Do not give up. Do not let go until the Lord blesses you and changes your name and brings you into that mandate that's been on your life and that God is saying, listen, the promises of God are yes and amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, that was so powerful, Tom. Thank you so much. I was watching the comments. So many people are being ministered to. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tom. I just, I could sit here and just flow with you all day. Like, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. It's always a joy. Always a joy. Um, as I always say, can um, you just give like a quick rundown um, if people watching, um, they want to connect with you guys, follow your ministry, what you're releasing, how can they do that? Yeah, you can follow us on. Um, so we have a School of Dream Intelligence on Facebook. Um, we we just started. Obviously, we launched the Samuel School of Prophets. Um, that's it's all tied to Kingdom Gravity Ministries. So you can find us on Facebook at Kingdom Gravity Ministries or you can find us at the School of Dream Intelligence. We've got a YouTube channel um, that you can find us there. You can follow me on my personal page on Facebook um, and our website, kingdomgravity.org. It has all of the things that we're doing. We'd love to uh, just see, you know, if any of you guys, if you're dreamers and, you know, um, would like to kind of go down the dream journey, find your dream language, find the blueprint of the map of dreaming that God is facilitating your life, would highly encourage you to come aboard. And um, and anyways, just I just want to say thank you, Lana for um you and kevin uh, you you guys are such a blessing to to the body have been such a blessing to lily and myself and um just a true friend and i i i say that um i'm just so grateful that for your friendship and uh just for your encouragement and through our process and and many of you um you know you, you we're just we're just so blessed that that the lord knows who to put in our life and uh, you have been just an anchor to our to our family Thank you so much. Likewise, we just love you guys and so, so thankful for you. You guys, you know, I always say you find your tribe. Well, we found our tribe. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I did write um, your website in the comments, but I don't know where it went. So people are asking, what is the website? So it was kingdomgravity.org. Kingdomgravity.org. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'll try one more time, guys. I don't know where it's going. but I can put it on here too kingdomgravity.org but um guys i really um encourage you to um really connect with these guys but also their what they are teaching on dreams and dream intelligence i cannot um encourage you enough to to jump on board with that because for me personally i've sent tom some dreams that i've had no idea i'm like this is crazy and yeah just through conversation the way the spirit of god has unlocked the meaning through Tom um, has been just phenomenal. So I would really encourage you guys to be part of that. Somebody's asking, what was the dream class? Do you want to just quickly? Yeah, yeah it's um, so we're, we're actually starting a, a dream school. It's a six week dream school in September. So if you guys, I believe the registration, if it's not open now, it will be opening soon. And so you can find all the information on the website, all the information as far as what it entails is on there. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to us and we're usually pretty good about getting back. Awesome. All right. Well, there you go, guys. I can see that on my screen. Can you see that your website on the screen, Tom, or is it just Uh, I can see it. That looks good. Okay, good. There you go, guys. So it's on the screen. So yeah, I encourage you to jump on their website and um, yeah and you'll find all the information that you need. So, all right. Well, bless you guys. So good to be with you all, and we'll see you soon. Bless you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.